What up, pimps? It's your boy back with another uh, Kerbal Space Program video. Although I feel like it's your boy is a bit of a cliche YouTube opening, right? But I don't really have an intro other than just, you know, what's up, guys? Welcome to another Kerbal Space Program video, which in and of itself is pretty corny. So I feel like I should probably have some formal way of introducing these videos. But I, I know not what. Is there a name? Should I say, what up, my Matt Launers? Like, you know, because like, that's what people like Logan Paul and Jake Paul say. They say Jake Paulers, I think. I don't think I've ever actually watched a Jake Paul video because I'm 24 years old. So I don't know. I feel like maybe I should... How, I, sh I feel like I need to establish. I need to establish some sort of branding in the form of an intro. But I don't know what. Anyway, welcome to this video, Matt Launers, in which we're going to be running another installment of uh, the series I'm doing. And that series is called Life on Lathe. Genuinely forgot the name of that series because it's been so long, guys. Yeah, you know, it's been like, what, two weeks? <sighs> That's like a very long time. We've had like at least three meme formats be introduced and subsequently die in that time. So it's been a while. But I hope it's been worth it because we're going to be basically installing the final major component of our operation. So for those that don't know, just a quick backstory. Life on Lathe is a series in which we're going to be kind of un un uncovering the mysteries of Jules' dampest satellite. This satellite, of course, being Lathe. So what have we done so far? We have established a big orbital kind of station to kind of center our operation and also to act as a big relay from the surface to you know, send messages back to Kerbin. We've also got our floating outposts to monitor the ocean activity. We have a land-based base <laughs> to monitor the land, I guess, and to form as a more sort of substantial and solid base of operations on the surface should any kind of storm or wave <laughs> hit the ocean base and compromise it. There is a slightly more fortified base on the land, and also, you know, it gives us access to some of the uh, more direct access, I should say, to Leith's um, immediate topography so you know geological surveys that sort of thing that's going to be what the land base is for and of course we have an aircraft that can land on both the land and the sea to connect the two bases together this aircraft obviously being fully refuelable on its own as well so it effectively has infinite range so it'll run there forever however whilst the two surface bases are connected the uh the orbital base and subsequently of course Kerbin, uh they, these are not connected to the surface ones enter player three this aircraft that we're sending to Lathe here. So, wow, the f the intro of this video has been quite quick, actually. I think I'm used to, like, giving these big, long wind intros because I've started getting into the habit of putting a time lapse at the beginning of my videos. But I didn't do that for this video because I forgot to press record during the construction of this craft. And quite frankly, I couldn't be bothered to uh, record it. I speak to you currently on a Friday. It is uh, 2 p.m., which is when I should be at work seeing patients and, you know, doing my job and all that. But I've been told to take at least two days, so that translates to four days because it's the weekend on Saturday and Sunday, uh, rest because I've really badly sprained my shoulder. I fell down my stairs and I kind of bashed into the, is it balustrade? Ballast? I think that's what it's called. It's like you have your banister, right? The railing that runs down the side of the stairs, obviously. And then it doesn't just sort of stop at the bottom it kind of connects to a little sort of pillar at the bottom of the stairs anyway i slipped about halfway down the stairs and sort of started falling tried to reach out for something didn't and so i then spun around to look and accept my fate and i sort of smashed in the sort of heart region which i i think is quite an important region of the body uh that kind of hit the uh the ball on top of my balustrade if that is in fact what it's called so, no broken ribs, luckily. I know this because I had an x-ray. <laughs> uh, no broken ribs. Everything very badly bru bruised and inflamed. Uh, I initially had a look in the mirror. I couldn't see any kind of the classical signs that something was severely broken. Uh, broken ribs, you know, you can tell if there's any kind of severe break, as in the rib has literally become detached or lodged into the lung or something. A, it would be very painful and breathing would be very, very difficult. More difficult than just a standard bruise. But also the fact that on attempted breathing, you'll see like this weird deformity would be the way I would describe it in the mirror. I didn't have that. Just a lot of bruising. Uh, so that was fine. So I, I went to work the next day anyway because it was just like 
you know, kind of painful breathing, but that was it. But over the past few days, my shoulder has been kind of creeping up more and more and more. And I woke up this morning and it was excruciating to move my left arm at all. Like I would try and lift it a little bit. and It was very, very painful. And it was starting to get worse yesterday. I noticed this because I was driving to work. And in the UK, pretty much everyone drives a manual car. So every time I had to shift gears, which is a lot in rush hour when you have to go from first gear, second gear, first gear, I was having to shift gears and it was agony every time I had to change gears. I thought maybe I just slept on it wrong, but over the course of the day, it got worse and worse and worse. And in my job, one of the things I do is something called a slit lamp exam. If you've ever been to the optician or eye doctor, you have to sit your chin on a chin rest and they look down this microscope at you. I, when I'm having to operate that microscope, you have to hold your arm at this very specific angle up in front of you. That was very painful to do. So it was not a great day. And on the way back, I was literally having to like really like vocally scream and swear every time I changed gears. It was too much. So I thought maybe I'll just sleep it off and it'll be fine. I don't know why the alarm bells were ringing. There was probably something more serious than that, but whatever. So I went to my GP this morning and he was like, yeah, I think you've dislocated it. You need to go to A&E right now. And I was like, oh, really? I mean, it doesn't look dislocated, <laughs> but I, I, I'm no expert. Eyes I know a lot about. Uh, but shoulders I, I know not as much about. So I went down. To, I, I went off my way to Mary Way, on my Mary Way to A&E, on the bus. I didn't fancy trying to drive again. And they did an x-ray. I had a proper full examination by two nurse practitioners. Um, and they basically concluded that nothing was broken. It was just very, very badly. It was a very bad soft tissue injury. So I've been told to take two days off resting. So that was kind of a, a reason why. I feel like, where did, how did I even start this this tangent? I said, oh, um, I'm supposed to be at work today, but this is why I'm not at work. But I feel like that was ages ago. I, I'm going to pause my commentary here, just check why I started talking about this. <laughs> so I think this thought uh, that, that that whole story and pretty much the bulk of this commentary started by me explaining how there was no like, like time lapse at the beginning of this video. Hence why I didn't get much chance to talk about the ascent of my initial rocket. But it was okay because uh, it has since prevailed that I haven't talked about pretty much any of this flight either. I mean, there wasn't really much to talk about. I have now gone to Lathe quite a few times back to back to back to back. So you probably get it. You probably guys probably get it at this point. So I didn't really need to talk about it too much. One thing I might mention, you may have seen me adjust my inclination of my orbit when I first captured at Lathe, which might not have made too much sense because we really didn't need to because since we're deorbiting ourselves anyway, any kind of angle would have been fine. We don't need to rendezvous with anything in orbit. So we could have just had any old angled orbit because at some point the surface base would have passed underneath it. But by adjusting my angle to match the station, it would have meant that we'd be uh, entering the atmosphere during the daytime. To get a proper encounter with the surface base, we'd be entering at night, uh, at least without having to wait for ages for a better re-entry window. So it's quicker just to adjust the inclination so we can enter during the daytime, just because it's a bit easier then. And also it's a bit nicer for, you know, a video purposes so that viewers can actually see what's going on. So I just set the surface base as our target and did a magnificently realistic re-entry. I mean, I guess we've not got Kerbals on board at this stage, so it doesn't matter too much. But I guess it probably would have been better to at least try and make it some, some, somewhat realistic. Either way, we have our base selected as our target there. A couple of times the nav ball kept on trying to switch the relative velocity to relative to target rather than relative to surface. I had to do a quick save because I smashed into the ground at what I thought was 17 meters per second. But I didn't realize that the nav ball had switched its relative velocity indicator. Whoops. Anyway, um, here we are coming for a touchdown here. And we have now touched down. There we go. So I will need to just quickly spin this around just so we're actually a little bit close to the base. I mean, I guess we don't because Kerbals, you know, they have legs. They can run. I say run. Uh, they can waddle quickly <laughs> towards the ship. But I guess, you know, for a photo opportunity, it would be nice if we could get this lined up to the actual surface base because, of course, we have the uh, flying base landed there at the same time. So we can get all three crafts. I was going to say ships, but the... So space doesn't really count as a ship, I don't think. So we can get all three um, pieces constructed things. Marvel's all three wonders of engineering in shot. And uh, we, we can do that. We can roll this plane towards it. I'm playing this footage a little bit faster to make it, you know, a little bit faster, obviously. I don't know why I felt the need to clarify that. 
And there it is, next to the uh, other two crafts there. So we can obviously deploy the solar panels. I'll quickly show off the fact that, yes, this thing does indeed have a drill, an ore tank that you can't see, and a uh, kind of refinery unit on board. So it has infinite range. It can refuel itself unlimited number of times. So it can constantly supply a direct chain of transportation and resupply from the surface to the orbiting base. This thing can't land on water, that's why we have the aquatic plane next to it to do all the ferrying from the land to the sea. But other than that, it's, I'd say it pretty much fulfills its purpose well. It has capacity to move every Kerbal from both bases into orbit and back again. Uh, yes, it, it has that ability. <laughs> and of course add means to dock to the space station as well. So we can have a little glamour shot here of the crafts together. And then we can talk about the... Oh, we're at 10 minutes 30. That's the time limit. I hate having videos that are just over 10 minutes because I feel like people have just people will think I've just made it cynically a little bit longer just so I can have more ad revenue. First of all, don't hate the players, hate the game. And secondly, I, I haven't done that. Should maybe I should put like um I'm I'll, maybe I should just put a black screen here for a bit uh, and just sort of talk about nothing for Nah, I won't do that. You guys could accept that. In fact, we're at 11 minutes now. So we should be okay. It's like anything between 10 minutes and 1 second in 10 minutes 59, people tend to be less likely to click it. I mean, to be fair, I probably fall into the same category, right? Because whenever I see a minute that's 10 minutes and 1 second, I'm like, uh, it's probably just fluff filler, just so people can get... So maybe I'm, maybe I'm, part, of a, I'm part of the problem as much as I'm <coughs> not a part of the problem. I don't know. Oh, God, I didn't even talk about what was on the 